We are back with another series. Let's revise PYQs. This will benefit you in your upcoming exam. Let's look at the first question from this video. Question 1. What would be the most appropriate investigation to consider next in a female patient who has persistent acne despite undergoing oral isotretinoin and antibiotic treatment? Your options are and the correct answer is evaluate for hyperandrogenism. Here's the explanation. Females who have predominantly acne on lower face and there is associated with signs of hyperandrogenism. Hyperandrogenism in the form of there can be increased hair growth or hirsutism, they may be seborrhea, the patient may has, have female pattern hair loss. This kind of acne is called as hormonal acne. Hormonal acne. There is a role of uh, hormones in acne. But if they are my predominant cause, then what will happen? The patient will be making more androgens. And this more androgens will be coming, as I explained, in hirsutism from ovaries or adrenals. So where will I see them more commonly? In, in patients with PCOS, in patients with adrenal tumors, in patients with congenital adrenal hyperplasias. Question 2. What is the probable diagnosis for a young woman who presents with a painless ulcer in the genital region accompanied by painless swelling of the lymph nodes in the groin? Your options are and the correct answer is syphilis. Here's the explanation. Primary stage of syphilis, which we already said, happens after an incubation period of 10 to 90 days. Now, this stage is also called as chancre, also called as hunterian chancre or hard chancre. These are all names given to this stage of syphilis. Now, what happens here? This is transmitted through genital root. So, you will get an ulcer in the genital area. What are the characteristics of this ulcer? Now, this is a single painless, well-defined ulcer with rubbery margins clean base and when you feel it, this is indurated. This is how you will be able to differentiate different genital ulcers. All these features are important for us. Question 3. Which of the following is associated with the clinical condition shown in the image? Your options are and the correct answer is malignant melanoma. Here's the explanation. How do you identify melanoma? You follow A, B, C, D, E rule. A means asymmetry. So, moles that have an asymmetrical appearance. Look at the border of the moles. Are the border having jagged edges? Then that's a suspicious thing. Look at the color. Are there different colors in a single mole? Look at the diameter. Is the diameter more than that of an eraser? That is more than 6 mm in size. And evolution. Is there a sudden increase in size, shape or color of the mold? So all these five features, if any of this happens, you do a biopsy, keeping a suspicion of malignant melanoma. Asymmetry, border, color, diameter and evolution. Question 4. A patient presents to you with multiple anagenital warts. The biopsy of these lesions showed squamous atypia. Which of the following human papillomavirus types are considered high risk? Your options are and the correct answer is HPV-18. Here's the explanation. Anogenital warts. Now, when the patient has anogenital wart, please think of STIE. Take sexual history, rule out uh, sexual transmission. Even if it is there in the child, rule out child abuse. Now, anogenital warts are also referred to as, sometimes in the exam, they will not write anogenital wart. They will write condyloma acuminata. Acuminata means pointed and condyloma means 
broad base. So, they are pointed broad base lesions. So, these are called as condyloma acuminata. In males, you would usually see them on sulcus and in females, you would usually see them on foshet at the site of sexual trauma because it will be transmitted from one person to another. So, it's called as condyloma acuminata. Look at the lesion. It is broad based and it is pointed. They are more softer than the warts that you see in the normal skin. They are more softer. Now, why is enogenital warts important? Now, enogenital warts is caused by two subclasses of HPV. So, one subclass which is 6 and 11 is called as low risk type. The other which is 16, 18, 31, 33. These are high risk type of HPV. What do you mean by high risk type of HPV? High risk means they can predispose to malignancies, predisposed to malignancies. That is why a lot of people are now doing HPV typing. There are HPV vaccines which are available because this high-risk HPV can predispose to malignancy. Question 5. What is the probable diagnosis for a cauliflower-shaped mass on the foot of a farmer that appeared after a minor injury with microscopy revealing copper penny bodies? Your options are and the correct answer is chromoblastomycosis. Here's the explanation. Chromoblastomycosis. Chromo means color. Blasto means vegetative. And mycosis means fungal infection. So it is a deep fungal infection which, ha will, ha which will present with pigmented verrucous plaques. on the lower limbs. What is the causative organism here? It is Fialophora verrucosa. Verrucosa, Fialophora verrucosa. So pigmented from here, verrucous from here. So pigmented verrucous asymptomatic plaques on lower limbs. So this is how the patient will present. Question 6. Irregular pitting of nails with sublingual hyperkeratosis as seen in your options are and the correct answer is psoriasis. Here's the explanation. The most common nail finding in a patient of psoriasis is pitting. Is pits. Pits as the name suggests are shallow depressions that you see on nails. You see these shallow depressions on the nails which are called as pits. The pits in psoriasis are typically irregular, deep, random. So, if this is a nail, it would be like this. So, there is a condition called as alopecia areata, so which also shows pits. But in that, in alopecia areata, the pits are more regular, geometric fashion, and are shallow or superficial. So, this sometimes they ask you an exam, they give you a picture of pits or they give you a finding of pits and you have to differentiate between two conditions. So, in psoriasis, you have deep, random, irregular, large pits. What are pits? Pits are basically local parakeratosis that's happening in nail, so leading to chipping of the nails and so you see these pits. Pits are the most common finding in a nail psoriasis. Question 7. What would be your next best course of action when a patient undergoing multidrug therapy, MDT, exhibits deterioration of pre-existing lesions and nerve involvement? Your options are And the correct answer is continue MDT, start systemic steroids. Here's the explanation. The treatment for both of them is continue MDT. This is very important. You do not stop MDT. You think that I've started MDT and then the patient has got reaction. So probably he's reacting to that. No, it's because of her, the CMI against the killed bacilli. So you continue MDT plus you give oral steroids. So for both of them, the treatment is the same. So sometimes in the exam, you're confused whether it is type 1 or type 2 that they're showing. Don't worry. If they ask you the treatment, it is continue MDT and oral steroids. Question 8. 
What is the probable diagnosis for a 30-year-old patient who has presented with flaccid bullae on her skin that are prone to easy rupture, with the biopsy showing a suprabasal split? Your options are And the correct answer is Pemphigus vulgaris. Here's the explanation. So, antigen in Pemphigus vulgaris is Desmoglein 3 and 1, but 3 more than 1. In Pemphigus foliaceus, it is Desmoglein 1. The split here is supra basal, and here my split is subcorneal. Why am I enumerating this? Because that is what they give you in the exam. They give you an image, they give you a clinical history, and they want you to differentiate between these two disorders. In the skin, what do you see? You see vesicles and bulla, which rupture in few days. Here you see mainly crusted erosions in seboric distribution. Nikolsky sign will be positive in both. Bulla spread sign will be positive in both if you see a bulla in pemphigus foliation. However, mucosal involvement will always be present in pemphigus vulgaris, whereas it will be absent in pemphigus foliaceous. So, if you remember this, you know why, how to differentiate between vulgaris and foliaceous. Question 9. Please determine the medication utilized for the management of the presented medical condition. Your options are. And the correct answer is anti-tubercular therapy. Here's the explanation. all forms of cutaneous TB, the treatment is similar. That is the best part. Whatever form of cutaneous TB you see, all are treated similarly. How do I treat it? I give two months of intensive phase and there is four months of maintenance phase. Question 10. A female patient with a body mass index of 30 kg per square meter presents to you with a lesion on the neck, as shown below. Which of the following conditions is the most likely to be suffering from? Your options are. And the correct answer is metabolic syndrome. Here's the explanation. Most important disorder here is echinthosis nigricans and you get a lot of questions on this. So, what is echinthosis nigricans? It's a misnomer, first of all, because you do not see any echinthosis in biopsy. Now, this is something, again, which you would have very commonly seen. You would have seen certain obese individuals who have a very black neck, who have a very black underarms, and they usually think it's dirt, but it's not dirt. It is this velvety, hyper pigmentation that you see on flexures. Usually you see it on neck, axilla, groins. So this velvety hyperpigmentation seen on these areas is called as echinthosis nigricans. Now it is very important to identify this because it is a marker of insulin resistance. It is a marker of insulin resistance. Now, if you look at this image carefully, you see some protruding growths that are coming out. These growths are nothing but skin tags. So, a lot of times they give you this image and they put these protruding growths and ask you what is growing on this. So, skin tags are a very common a skin condition which you see associated with echinthosis nigricans. So, you see skin tags associated with AN. Now, why does AN happen? AN happens because of increased production of IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor 1. Okay? Now, this is commonly associated with, as I told you, insulin resistance. So commonly seen in diabetics, patients who are obese, patients who have metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance and patients on OCPs. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found the video interesting. See you in the next one.